Hello everybody and welcome to another Construct 2 tutorial. I'm going to be showing you guys how to create falling jump through platforms, platforms that fall when your player is on top of them and can also be jumped through, jumped through. So we're going to just go right into it, jump right into it. <laughs> so we're going to look for the plat, so we're just going to type in plat, that's much easier, and then double click on the platformer template <clears throat> as my voice breaks. All right, so first things first, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cloning the jump current jump through tile that's already in the project. So we're just going to call this falling tile, keep the name short and sweet, I'm going to double click on that, and then we're going to change the color, and I kind of prefer this tomato looking color here, a little bit nicer looking to give it a distinguish, um, distinguished color from the rest of the platforms in the game. So what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to drag this out and right now by default actually the platformer template has grid locking on or snap to grid sorry which I find is very useful for creating pixel arty graphics so once we have three of these little guys we're gonna do this all right they'll spread out nice and nice and easy all right, so then we can just go ahead and get started in adding instance variables. Now these are very important for managing exactly what our falling tiles are doing and when. So we have the first one, we need a boolean type. We're gonna call this is moving. Now this is basically set to true when our character jumps on top of the tile and lands on top of it, not through it, not as, you know, not as, in, not as just inside of it, but explicitly on top of a platform and this platform. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. Next, we're going to create a, another, we're going to create a number, first number here. So we're going to call this, if I can spell, acceleration. Hopefully I spelled that right. All right, then we're going to give this a very, very high value because this is the period over time, um, some period of time until we get to a, a specific value that our falling platform, falling tile, will be falling. So in this case, we want something like, for example, 512. I've experimented with this a little bit, and I find that 512 is a good, good starting number. So we're going to need another one called velocity, and this is going to be set to zero because we are going to be using acceleration to increase the velocity over time. And then we need velocity max. Now this one is important because this determines exactly when we will stop accelerating the object. And then that is it for the instance variables. All right, so we're gonna go to our event sheet. Now a cool little hotkey you can use is control tab to cycle through your layouts and event sheets. I find it to be handy to me. And we're going to actually, we're not gonna be editing anything in here. What we're going to be doing is we're gonna be creating a custom event sheet. And we're going to be calling this a little more, you can be a little more descriptive as much as you want. We're going to call this actually, yes, falling, jump, I can spell jump jump through tile manager so this manages our falling jump through tiles and then we're going to make sure that we include this into our event sheet so this could be for example um we, we could probably call this um level events and that'd be a little more descriptive than just event sheet one which is doesn't really say anything about that so then we're going to go to back to our falling jump through manager and we're going to be adding events in. So we need, most importantly, we're going to go to player. We're going to type in, in this little search here, we're going to type in COL for collision. And we need on collision with another object. This event is important because it will register when our player has collided with the falling tile. And then, also very important, we're going to press, actually, oh, by the way, you can press C to add another condition. We're going to go to our player again and we're going to use a value from our platform behavior that the player has we're going to be going is on floor. Now this is important because the, this way, when we collide with the platform, it won't start falling until we are on it. So precisely on top of that platform. This ensures that it won't start falling, for example, when you just, when the player is just going through it because otherwise the player would never actually be, it might, may not be on top of it, and that just wouldn't work. Break the flow of the game, and your player would be unhappy, and we don't want that. All right, so what we're going to do is we really only need one action here. We're going to double-click our falling tile, and we're going to um, set a Boolean 
value, we're going to set is moving to true. And this tells us that it should be moving. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate a Boolean instance variable. We're going to evaluate the is moving. Now this fires off whenever is moving is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another action here. And we're going to basically increase the velocity, add to, add to the velocity of our falling platform. And what we're going to do is we're going to add self dot acceleration times dt. So we are going to basically add our acceleration value to it, which will accelerate the object, so to speak, over a period of time. And then what we need to do is we're going to click B. We can add little sub blank events. We're going to click, click. We're going to add three little blank events. So first things first, what we need to do, we're going to compare instance variable velocity to see whether or not it is greater than or equal to our self dot velocity max. Now, this is very important because we can determine whether or not we should stop accelerating it. So when we've reached our target velocity, just stop and let it fall at that constant rate. So we're going to go here and we're going to set the value of acceleration to zero. And that's basically that. This means that here we will never wind up accelerating it more after we've reached the target velocity. Very simple, straightforward. Now what we're going to do here, oh, sorry, we actually don't need a condition. What we're going to do is we're just going to go to action, falling tile, I can get that. And then what we're going to be doing is use move at angle. And we're going to move at a 90 degree angle or down, essentially. And we're going to move it the self dot velocity value that we are currently, that we, that we currently have. So next, now this is optional, what we can do is we can actually determine whether or not our falling tile is outside of the layout and then we can just flat out destroy it. Now the reason we are doing this here is basically because our layout is very static. We're not just dynamically adding or taking away objects like an auto runner would be. We just have our layout and this is what the level is going to look like from beginning to end. So for example when this goes outside this little boundary right here which inevitably it will if it's moving, we can just trash it because it's never going to be useful to the player. The only time that might be an issue is if, for instance, you have this falling platform located somewhere about here, and you would like the player to have a little bit of extra time to be able to jump off the platform, because once it does reach the outside of the layout, it will be destroyed. So, for instance, the player would wind up getting to about here, and then they would just fall. So if you'd like the player to get to about here, then we need to have a few more checks in order to make sure that they can that they have a little bit more time to jump, which would be not this condition specifically, but you would evaluate its current position, whether or not it's outside of the layout, but not just outside of the layout, about, let's say, 32 pixels outside the layout. So for our purposes, this is our precise setup. It's very straightforward. We have it included. And now we can go ahead and play. All right, so let's use our WASD keys. Boop. Oh no, I messed it up. <laughs> All right. All right, and there we go. We can try that again just to see. Let's let's ride. Let's ride one down. Oops. Oh no. Eh. There we go. All right. So as you can see, it's working perfectly. We have our jump through behavior, and they only start moving as soon as we've actually touched and landed on the very top. So thank you guys very much for watching. That pretty much wraps up this project that I was going to show you how to do. And now we have a little space set up only for this code related specifically to our falling jump through tile. I like including more than one event sheet, um, for example, for multiple kinds, but separate mechanics. That way that you can that that way just visually it's less cluttered um some of you guys may like everything in one event sheet i prefer this at points it, it depends it depends completely on what you guys want so that wraps up this tutorial now i just wanted to show you guys something that i've been working on and actually published to the sierra um, store recently so this is what i like to call the advanced audio fade driver now what this is is it's basically a collection of functions 
and events and all sorts of stuff. Basically, a um, essentially another event sheet that you would include that will allow you to call a function that I've created that sends off an audio by its tag to an array. And then, depending on the parameters that you pass, it will fade it um, either in, out, just to a certain volume. So, for example, you want to reduce its decibel level by like five. You can do that as well without stopping the sound. Or if you want to reduce it all the way, you want to completely fade out the audio, then essentially you would just have it fade out to negative 60 decibels, which is a good lowest volume that something is generally audible to the to your player, and then kill it from there. So this, um, I'd say, you know, I'd say it took me about 20 to 30 hours to code this entire project, and I'm pretty proud of it. It works. I've tested it out. I actually uploaded to the arcade my own. If I can find it. Aha! My own little example. So you can go here if you'd like. I'll give you the link to both so you can test it out. So this allows you, this will show you exactly what it sounds when you fade in a music loop, when you fade one out. Sorry, when you fade one out, that's what these are for. Or if you'd like to also crossfade two different tracks of audio. Now, that's one that is very useful, for example, when you'd like to transition music suddenly. Like, for instance, you have a battle soundtrack. So, when an enemy comes up to your player and they're fighting with them, you can crossfade into that combat audio and crossfade back when your player has successfully defeated the threat, essentially. So, right now, it's on sale for a few more days. If you'd like to pick it up, I would really love, um, I essentially I need reviews and I need people to be able to comment on whether or not it's useful, first of all that it, it, it truly is useful, um, whether or not my comments are easy to follow, easy to read, and whether or not it works properly. Um, as you can see I put up a very, I put up a ex rather extensive list of test cases trying to test out all of the different kinds of fades that I have and options. Um, but as much time as I can put into it, I know exactly how to use it, so I have kind of a biased opinion on whether or not I can make it work versus someone who just wants, who literally just wants to know how to fade audio. So thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope I taught you something new, especially about these two little handy dandy features. And thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys all in the next video in which I'm actually going to cover how to import the audio fade driver into a project of your own. Alright, I'll see you guys later.